Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. In the last video, we had seen the treatment of the early cases in oroantral fistula. Now, in this video, we are going to have a look at the treatment of the delayed cases, what all surgical procedures we do, and that too in a very unique animated form. So, stick to this video till the end because it's really going to be very easy, very interesting. And if you like it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because it really motivates me to work better and create better quality videos. Now, let us suppose the patient came to you 24 hours after that accident, the accident in which there was a formation of creation, that is formation of oroantral fistula. So, what are you expecting at that time? During that time, during those 24 hours, that area has sort of got some kind of infection. So, it is preferable that we don't do the treatment immediately. What we do, we delay the treatment for at least three weeks. And during that time, we give the patient antibiotics, analgesics, decongestant. Okay. So if the opening is small, these treatment like these antibiotics, analgesics, decongestant will give positive results. The area, the small opening will show signs of healing. But in case, if you have, you know, if you see after 24 hours that the patient has pus discharge or the patient, you know, meanwhile, in those three weeks, the patient develops acute or chronic sinusitis, then, you know, you have to move on to the advanced treatment. You have to irrigate those areas. You have to do some kind of, you know, treatment option. We'll see all those things in the next few minutes. Now, let's talk about the treatment of long duration. That is, more than a month has passed. Now, what we are going to do, so usually during this time, the fistula has already formed. That tract, the fistulous tract is usually well formed. So, we require a surgical closure. And usually such patient will have infection, pus discharge, or complain of foul taste in the mouth, foul smell. So, how are we going to treat such cases? So, the first thing we are going to do is that we have to clean the sinus thoroughly. We have to clean it with normal saline until it is clear. And then we will put the patient on antibiotics, analgesics. And when the condition kind of improves, we will go for the surgical repair. Now, in the surgical repair, various techniques are there. Let's see them one by one. So, three types of flaps can be used to close the defect. Either you can use a portion from your cheeks, that is the buccal surface called the buccal flap. You can surgically excise that flap from the cheek and then close the defect. And then we have the palatal flap. We do the same thing. We remove a portion of the flap from the palate and we close it. And then the third type is the combination of both, where we use both the buccal and the palatal flap. So basically, we have three types of flap, the buccal, the palatal and combination. Talking about the first one, that is the buccal flap advancement procedure. This one is said to be the most satisfactory method for closing the fistula. So let's see the procedure. We give an LA in the mucobuccal fold. This not only numbs the area, but also constricts the blood supply because of the vasoconstrictive property of the anesthetic so that there is less chances of the formation of hematoma okay then we will excise the fistulous tract we will take blade number 11 and we will run it across the excised gum margins to give them some fresh blood supply now we are going to give incision using blade number 15 starting from each side of the opening into the buccal sulcus up to a distance of 2.5 cm. Now this has to be extended towards the cheek. Make sure that we don't injure the duct of the parotid salivary gland because it lies here. After reflecting this mucoperiosteal flap, as you can see here, we will check the bony margins of the ridge and we can smoothen it out if needed. Then we have to 
take this flap this is the buckle flap right so we have to take this flap and we have to cover that opening right but before that we have to inspect the maxillary sinus means there should be no signs of infection or no foreign body should be there inside the sinus if we have an enteral pathology we'll go for caldwell luke procedure that we'll be seeing after a few minutes now once we have all that things checked we will suture the mucoperiosteal flap into the position and we will give interrupted sutures then of course after this we are going to prescribe antibiotics and analgesics nasal decongestants to the patient we have to give certain instruction to the patient like he has to avoid sucking avoid sneezing and even avoid blowing nose so when the patient follow the instruction properly and everything goes as expected the sutures will be removed after 7 to 10 days so that was about the buccal flap advancement which was given by von reherman that is why we can say that it is reherman operation and from there we are going to learn about the modified reherman operation or modified reherman's buccal advancement flap so this is similar to the last one we had seen the only difference is that once we take out that mucoperiosteal flap what we are going to do we will remove 1 to 2 mm of the mucosal layer basically we are removing the epithelium so only submucosa is left right so that is called as deepithelialization so this flap now we'll call this denuded flap because we have removed the mucosa so this deepithelialized flap margin will be pulled below the edge of the palatal mucosa and we will give some vertical mattress sutures here and then as you can see on top of it we have the edge of the palatal mucosa right so that will be closed with the help of interrupted sutures so here we are giving two kinds of suture so this will ensure that we have double layer closure so that is the modified reherman's buccal advancement flap to remember this procedure just remember the double layer closure and then we can relate what happened why double layer closure because we had denuded the epithelium right and then we had tucked it just below the palatal mucosal edge and both of them were tied by sutures one by vertical mattress suture and then on top of it the interrupted sutures then coming to the palatal flap this procedure is slightly more difficult than the buccal flap operation because the palatal tissues are less elastic but the blood supply to the palate is very good we have rich blood supply from the greater palatine vessels so that will promote a very good healing so that is the advantage by taking the palatal flap in the buccal flap there are chances that the depth of the buccal vestibule will lessen so in case the patient want dentures it might cause problem but you know studies have shown that it does not cause problem so that is kind of a conflicting thing so let's talk about the palatal perical flap we have ashley's operation so as usual we'll give local anesthesia we'll excise the fistulous tract and then we make the marking of the palatal flap we can use bonnie's blue ink we will mark out the area of the palatal flap that we have to lift and then we will raise the flap and making sure that the maxillary sinus is checked properly and irrigated properly and also smoothing of the buccal periosteum is done so all these boxes checked now we are going to rotate this flap and we'll approximate it to the buccal margin and then we will rotate this flap to close the defect and we will suture it by giving interrupted sutures then coming to combination of the buccal and palatal flap so in cases where we have large defect sometimes the closure might not be a success so in that case we can take both the palatal and the buccal flap so we can have a two layered closure right one palatal one buccal so in addition to giving strength this will also minimize the contraction 
then the next one is the Caldwell Luke operation about which we are going to study in the next video. So I hope you found the video helpful. Let me know in the comment section below if there is a comment section available. I don't know the platform where it will be uploaded. So let me know in the comment section below and it will really be motivating for me to come up with more videos. See you in the next video. Allah Hafiz.